Hey guys, today I want to share a tutorial with you on how to create this whimsical mushroom doll. I filmed every step, so it's very beginner friendly. These dolls are very popular on my Etsy shop right now, so I think you'll enjoy it too. You can find a full tutorial on how I sculpt faces on my blog. I leave the link in the description below. So for this doll you'll need a sculpted face and two sculpted hands. You can use any air dry clay or polymer clay, it's your choice. I start by painting the face with white acrylic paint. This will be a good base for further painting. All the materials will be linked in the description as well. Cover the whole face and hands in two layers of paint. Take your time and try to minimize visible brush strokes. This will result in more smooth finish. I wait a few minutes in between layers for the paint to dry. Sometimes you can accidentally wipe off previous layer if the paint hasn't dried yet. When the painting is done and the paint has dried, it's time to spray it with varnish. It will make the surface smoother and prepare it for painting with colors. I use matte water-based acrylic varnish. To give the face some color and blushing, I use soft pastels. I have this setup of a box that's lined with sanding paper, so I can easily ground the pastels to colorful dust. I'll be using white, peach and dark pink to create the skin color. White is mostly needed for blending, it won't be really visible while painting. For painting the features, I like to use watercolors. This Japanese watercolor set is my favorite. I find that watercolors have that translucent finish that really suits dolls. White gouache for some accents or lightening the colors is also very useful. You will need a thin watercolor brush as well. I like synthetic ones, but you can use anything that you are used to. Start by adding white pastel first, it will help with blending the other colors, even though it will look like nothing at first, but you are building a good base. Next I'm adding a peach pastel. I focused on cheeks, nose and eyebrow area. We will need a few layers of pastels for the color to show up fully. It's a good idea to use pastels from lighter to dark colors. So now I'm adding a dark pink. Like before, I mostly paint cheeks, nose and the eyebrow area.
don't forget to blush those tiny hands as well. After the first layer of pastels, spray it with varnish once again. It will lock the color in and the next layer will be much brighter. For the second layer, I mostly do the same steps. Start with a white color for better blending and then move on to other colors. You can already see the color showing up more. Usually I do only two layers because I like that soft look. But you can use as many as you want, just don't forget to spray it with varnish after each layer. I start painting the features by bringing back the white color in the eyes. For that I use white acrylic paint. When painting with pastels it's inevitable to get powder everywhere, so you might need to do some cleaning and brightening again. For the lips I mixed a few red watercolors. At first I tried to focus more on the shadow area in the middle. To blend in the harsh lines I use light pink and try to really give the lips some texture and different values. It might take a few minutes until I'm really happy with the result. So just keep adding paint, try different reds and pinks, don't be afraid to leave some brush strokes as they give the lips some realistic looking lines.
add some highlights using white paint that can be gouache or acrylic I like to highlight the lips, the cupid's bow and the corners to blend in the highlights just use a wet brush it will pick up the color and will blend it nicely with the white I paint the pupils black. I like that cartoony look for the plush dolls. Depending on your design, you can paint more realistic looking eyes. I take my time to create a nice shape by going back and forth with black watercolor. Using quick short brush strokes, I paint the eyebrows. For that, brown watercolor works wonderful. I don't want any harsh lines and try to make it as natural as possible. Now it's probably my favorite thing to paint, freckles. I use the same brown. Add a few dots and dab some paper towel to soak up the excess paint. This technique helps to avoid really uniform and boring looking freckles. It makes it more random and different darkness. Continue the same steps until you are happy with the amount of freckles. To keep those cartoony eyes, I'm adding white highlights with a dotting tool. I use acrylic paints for high viscosity and bright color. You can add more than one highlight, I find that it makes the doll even more cute. For hands, I like to darken the areas in between the fingers. I think it's a nice way to add more details. Trace the pattern on your selected fabrics. For the mushroom hat, I'm using a thicker wool. It has a nice texture and some weight to it. It's important that the fabric would be able to hold its shape. Cut out one regular and one mirrored piece. My pattern already has seam allowance included.
Once you have both pieces cut out, put them together and sew the top of the hat. I use a sewing machine, but I think it could be easily done by hand as well. For the inside of the hat, I have a very thin white cotton. We will be making a lot of pleats, so thin fabric is necessary. Cut a long strip of fabric that would be the width of the hat. To attach the lining of the hat, we will be using the leather stitch. Keep the hat inside out, fold the edge and align the white fabric with the folded edge together. Then using the leather stitch, start sewing them together. While sewing, start making little pleats to create that mushroom cap look. I keep them irregular, different size to make it more organic. Keep going until the whole cap has the white lining inside. If you run out of the fabric, just attach the new piece. It won't be visible with all these folds. Once you're done, it should look something like this. The next step is to gather all the white fabric and sew it together to hide the seams and make it the inside of the hat all white. There are no rules here, I just gather the fabric and use the leather stitch to connect it all. Now turn the hat to the good side and see the result. It might need some adjustments at first, so don't be afraid to fluff it up or mold it how you want. To create those distinct white dots on the mushroom hat, I'll be using embroidery. Don't choose completely white thread as it will look a tiny bit unnatural. Of white or vanilla shade will work great. Using backstitch or outline stitch, embroider a wobbly circle. I try to make them all in different shapes, more oval than a circle, then fill it in using a satin stitch. I find embroidery very relaxing, so keep that in mind and don't make it too perfect. The irregular shapes are so common in nature.
Repeat the same steps until you are happy with the amount of dots. I recommend looking at the real fly garlic mushroom pictures to see all the possibilities. To make it more fun, I'll be adding some white beads as well to fill in some spots that might need a tiny white dot. Here's how the finished cap looks like. I really love all the different shapes of white speckles and beads give a nice texture as well. This step is completely optional, but I'll be using some watered down coffee to age the edges of the fabric. It's looking a little too white for me, so a subtle touch of beige will tie it all together nicely. Now continue to sew the body. Trace the remaining pattern on some off-white fabric. I use a fleece fabric for some soft and squished texture. Here are all the pieces for the body. The front piece, two back pieces and the bottom. When all connected, it should look something like this. The opening at the front will be used for stuffing and gluing the face later. To make the doll stand on itself, I'm using some sturdy cardboard to place at the bottom before stuffing the body. Using plush stuffing, fill the body fully. It needs to hold its shape, but have some squishiness still. To glue the face, I use two kinds of glue, the rubber glue and some super glue. The rubber glue stays elastic even when dry, so it really works for gluing the fabric. I start at the top of the head using the rubber glue. They don't dry as quickly, so I have some time to adjust the placement of the face. I try to fold the fabric to form a tidy edge around the face as well. Next, go around the face with super glue and make sure it's all attached to the fabric. The doll is almost done. I just need to make sure the cap fits nicely and attach some creamy ribbon so it will tie at the front. To 
To make the skirt that is so distinct for fly agaric mushrooms, I'm using the same white fabric as for the lining. The frayed edge and some folds will look just as the real mushroom skirt. To attach the hands, I'm making two small incisions in the fabric of the body. Using super glue, I'm attaching them to the fabric. Make sure the fabric wraps around the hands without leaving any gaps. The finishing touch is to crown your mushroom with that beautiful red cap. Tie the ribbon at the front and enjoy your creation! I want to really thank you for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you can, it really helps to grow my channel. See you next month with another video!